Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I would like to do a quick review for this Planeswalker here. This one is a new one that we're getting. This is Ugin the Ineffable. And uh, before I start, I want to say a big thank you to Webcore. Webcore is really nice. They've taken care of me here so that I can take care of you. They've given me this Planeswalker so I can do a nice review and kind of summarize what I think of this Planeswalker so that we can tell you guys about it. And then you guys can make an informed decision if you guys like this one or not. All right, so let's get into it. The first thing I want to point out are these mana bonuses here. You'll see you have plus one for all of them. Now, if you look at it, that's uh, that's a little low, right? You got plus five overall here. Now, that means he's going to be a little bit on the slower side. But you know what? I, I'd say that plus one for all of them here, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Because you can use cards like Sunken Citadel that will give you plus two for each of these. And you get plus two for each of them because they're all positive mana, right? So if, if you have a positive mana bonus, you'll get plus two. And of course, this one has all of them. So that's great. Sunken Citadel is just going to be one of those cards that if you have Ugin the Ineffable, you're just going to have to play it pretty much in every single deck. It's really really a good card so awesome there all right let's take a look here this is our first ability for 12 elder insight exile the top four cards of your library increase your loyalty bonus by three and all of your other mana bonuses by one these bonuses can't be raised by this ability more than three times then gain x mana x is equal to your loyalty bonus so I think there are some interesting uses for this first one, right? This part about exile the top four cards of your library. You can build decks around that, I think. You can use cards like Unlicensed Hearse that will give you a nice buff for the uh, amount of creatures or amount of cards in your exile. So that's one that you could use there. There's some other uses. I think you hit this ability once. All of these will turn into plus two, right? So that's going to be very useful. That would give you a, a mana bonus of 10 when you combine them all together. Together, and that's pretty strong that that's usually very good I would also include cards like the dictate of Karametra which gives you plus one to all of your other positive mana bonuses right so that would give you another plus one here I've already talked about uh, the sunken citadel that's another good one that that pairs well with this ability as well here so cool one that's a cool one uh, here's the next one rendezvous of spirits move the first three cards from your exile to your hand Create four colorless spirit tokens. Your spirit creature tokens gain defender and flying. All right, so let's take a look at this colorless spirit. You'll get four of them. And as you can see, they are 2-2. Two, two. So that creature that you'll have as soon as you hit that ability will be 8-8. Eight, eight. That's a nice sized creature. It says when this creature dies, return the first card from your exile to your hand. Now, one thing I want to point out is they're going to have Defender, right? And because they have Defender, I would probably try to pair this card with Sigarda, the host of Herons. That's going to get you prevent damage for these guys here. They're going to be able to block and they'll not take any damage. You'll also be able to convert gems to loyalty if you use that Sigarda creature. That's a good one there. If you don't have that, I'd probably go with Remka Rolis. They also will get the uh, prevent damage, so that's going to be great. Good stuff here as well. Okay, here's the next one. I think this is a really good one. Imprisonment on the Meditation Realm. Alright, this one here says, Exile all colored cards. This effect can affect Vanguard supports. Create a Spirit Gem token. Gain an extra swap. Here's the Spirit Gem token, right? It says this one can't be reinforced. When you match a loyalty gem by swap, convert three gems to loyalty gems. When you activate a loyalty ability for the first time during your turn, your opponent loses life equal to their highest mana bonus. Okay, this is a great ability overall. You can spam this one and it would just become uh, a total win-win situation for yourself, right? You'd be able to keep things off of the board, right? You'd be able to make sure your opponent can't play anything that's a colored card, it's just non-colored. These colorless cards is all they would be able to play and you would get extra swaps, right? So if you could hit this one turn after turn, that would be great. What I would do for that is probably use Golden Wish. That's a good card to help you with that. And also Faithbound Judge, that's another good one that's going to help you to just use this over and over again, obviously because it's got that Sinner's Judgment ability. Okay, so let's take a look at the deck that I've built here. This one is called Scotland Yard based on the detectives. I like to call it Scotland Yard because it, there are a lot of detectives. Well, there's two detectives in here, but it makes use of these detectives. Alright, so really quickly, this is how we're going to win games. 
We're going to use the Persuasive Interrogators. This one is an interesting one because when a clue support you control is destroyed, create two Phyrexian Toxin Tokens under your opponent's control. And these were the Toxin Tokens that if you have one and you reinforce it for your opponent 20 more times, then you win, right? That's one of those secondary win conditions. This one is a deck that we're going to try to launch all of those Phyrexian Toxin Tokens at your opponent in maybe one or two turns, okay? And you'll see how we do that here. The Case of the Pilfered Proof. This is the next one. This one, the important part here is when a token creature enters the battlefield, create a clue token. Now what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to make sure we get a lot of token creatures into play. The way we're going to do that is by playing Iganjo Uprising, right? This one is going to give us Samurai tokens. We're going to be able to get 10 at the most if we fill this thing up with mana. All right, so we'll get the 10. Those will turn into clue tokens, obviously. And those every time we destroy those clue tokens, we'll get two Phyrexian Toxin tokens for your opponent. Remember, we need one plus the 20 extra. The way I would like to destroy all of them at one turn and one shot is using this here, Desist, right? It's the backside of Cease. Of course, it says destroy all gems. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to get this one here, Iganjo Uprising, to make all of those clue tokens, and then boom, destroy them all with one turn here with Desist. All right, uh, that's pretty much the deck. I would suggest that you try it out for yourself. I'm sure you guys would love to build this one here. You're sure to have a lot of fun with it. All right, let's see what we can do. We're going to try to make sure we can get all of those tokens down right there. Assemble the players. This is a really good one. You can basically take cards from your, your library, those creature cards, put them into play. This is going to help us a lot by getting those detectives that we want. We're going to get them out really quickly. We're only going to have to pay for that card once, obviously. So that's going to be a, a definite advantage there for us. Okay, there we go, got a Steam Core Scholar, that's nice. Oh, look at that, both of those, uh, they're right there together. There we go, and there we go. Okay, our Assemble the Players is out. We're gonna use that one to get those detectives that we like. Persuasive Interrogator, very good. Steam Core Scholar is probably gonna be the next one. I think what I'll do is I'll start playing, um, I'll start getting it ready to, to get played. You know what, I won't because we're probably going to get it soon anyway. Just got to be patient. Let's see if we get it on the next one. Got a 50-50 chance of getting it on the next one anyway, so let's see. And, oh, Persuasive Interrogators, that's actually good because we won't get killed here when we attack. There we go, and we're making those Phyrexian Toxin Tokens. Okay, we'll get the Steam Core Scholar out. We'll move this up. Yeah, that's about right. Okay, and then, you know what? We'll go with Elder Insight. We want to make sure we're using that as quickly as possible. That's such a good ability there. All right, and we'll go here. There we are, that's what we wanted. Steam Core Scholar. Okay, Dihada is a good one. Dihada is really nice. Dihada will help us to find the cards that we want and we'll make sure we're able to play them. Okay, now, as we talked about, this is a deck that's got a lot of moving parts, right? One of the things that we need to have are these, these guys here. So that's really good. We do need to have those detectives out. And what we're also going to need is the case of the Pilfered Proof. That one is really, really important, obviously. If we don't have that one, we're not able to make those clue tokens. Okay, so we'll hit this. That's going to take care of our ensnaring bridge. Dihada's ready for us to play as long as we can pay him off. All right, and we'll go like this. There we are. That's nice. Okay, we're going to get Dihada. We're going to be able to kill off our opponent's creature. Tell you what, we're, we're going to save it just in case. What we need now is that Pilfered Proof. The thing we're going to go with next turn, as soon as we get the chance, is we're going to use our Dihada here. We're going to see if we can get the case of the Pilfered Proof out pretty quickly. 
Looks like they're scoring pretty well on the swaps. Steam Core Scholar, right. Iganjo, that's nice. We need Iganjo. Okay, we'll put Iganjo up. And one thing you'll notice is I like to have Iganjo and then desist, right? That's the order that you want to play them in. So that's the order I'm going to set it up in the hand. Okay, and then what we really need is Case of the Pilfered Proof. And there it is. Great. Okay, uh, let's take a Case of the Pilfered Proof. Once this is down, we're going to be able to go for that solved token. or the. And then once we get that solved token down, we're going to be able to just quickly load up on the ability here to, to win this game. Okay, so you're going to be able to see it on the next turn. We're going to be able to get those amazing those amazing tokens down. Okay, you see the clues coming up. Alright, Case of the Pilfered Proof is here. It's got that solved emblem already. Now all we got to do is launch a Ganjo. Once that's done, you're going to get those tokens. Those are going to turn into clues. Then we're going to hit a, the desist here, which will destroy all of the gems. Once those gems are destroyed, that should be it. That should be the game. All right, here we are. Let's take a look. Iganjo is putting down those samurai. Those samurais are bringing in those clue tokens. There we are. Nice clue tokens. Nice clue tokens. You're going to make sure you get enough, right? Obviously, we're going to get 20 of those samurai. Uh, our ability is going to be 20. So that means we're going to have 10 of the samurais and 10 of those clue tokens. The opponent is going to get samurais as well. You're seeing that they're putting down more of those clue tokens on my side of the board. So that way I can use them against the opponent. And once we hit that desist that's coming up here, will destroy all of them kind of nicely right there and now that they're destroyed the opponent is catching those phyrexian toxin tokens these of course will be enough to win the game all we really need is 20 because we already put some down uh we're gonna get way more than that as you can see this is a nice way to load up on those toxins uh and pretty much take all of the 20 put them down and all in one turn as soon as our turn is over, this is going to be the end of the game. This is a, a really interesting way to play this Planeswalker. I, I think you guys can build this one as well. There's not a ton of hard cards to, to get. That Ensnaring Bridge, of course, is important. So make sure you guys go for that one. And uh, yeah, that's basically all I got to say, folks. Hope you guys like the video. We do this for you. This is This is your channel too, right? So... Please like and subscribe, share with all your friends. We always say that because that really just helps the channel a lot. You can see those Phyrexian Toxin coming down. And uh, yeah, this is this is the end of the turn. I'm going to say no here. Your opponent's going to get a turn and then they're going to lose the game. The opponent's turn and boom, there it is. All right, that's it from us. Good gaming, guys.